In this video, I'll be going through a practical exercise of lighting a character using the general principles of three-point lighting. You don't have to follow along, but if you want to get the most from this tutorial, then it's worth checking out the previous two tutorials on sculpting and painting. Okay, so in setting up for lighting, I like to go back to my layout workspace and I find it helpful to pull out a new window like this and we can have a new one here as well. I'll change one to the camera view with zero on my numpad and line the camera up. So I'll press N on my keyboard Go to view and lock camera to view. Just extend this out so you can see that clearly there. I'll press N to get rid of that side panel and move the camera into position using the normal keys to move the viewport. There looks good to me. So I'll press N again and take the lock camera to view off and press N again. I'll press T to get rid of this side toolbar here. I'll come across to rendered view, which looks a bit odd at the moment. I'll turn the overlays off and the gizmos off and I'll right click and turn the header off as well. If you need to get the header back, it's just up here where that drop down is. But now I've got a nice view with just my camera set up and it looks pretty awful at the moment, but we'll get there. The bottom one, I'll press T and turn the gizmos off. Then I've got a bit more space there and I'll go to top view. That's quite helpful to set up my lights around my object. And this one, I'll just move around generally as I see fit. So you might just quickly want to set up your viewport in the same way I have here, but you don't have to, it's not completely necessary. Now the first thing is I've got a light just here and I can press G to grab and move that around and get some interesting effects. I'll just minimize this because we don't need it anymore. We've got the lighting options down here and if I click on that, we've got four types of light. I find the area lights are the best for this. I'll just zoom out a touch here so you can see what that looks like and we can grab this yellow dot here and move that over our target. That's a nice easy way of pointing at the target like that. At the moment it's a thousand watts, which is a bit bright. So I'll turn that down to something like 500. Now these are true world values as it were, but our object, if I click on it and press N and go to item, is three meters tall. So the light is acting correctly as a 500 watt bulb for a three meter tall head. So you might want to scale things down if you want, but I wouldn't bother, I'd just click on your light, just see how they look in the viewport and change them accordingly. Now we've got a very gray background here. I actually want the background to be completely dark so we're just lighting the character with the light. It's much better to learn that way. I'll quickly jump across to the shading workspace and where it says object here, I can change that to world. I'll press period key on my numpad and that zooms into my objects. You can press view frame all just there as well or frame selected, we'll do a similar thing. And I'll turn the strength right down to zero. It doesn't change in this viewport because it's on material preview mode, which gives us a different sort of lighting. But if I go to rendered view, you can see the results we get there. Now, just before we go back to our lights, there is one more thing I'd like to do with this material. If I click on the object, go back to the object properties here rather than the world. You may want to experiment with the roughness of your skin, but around 0.5 is absolutely fine. The other thing you might want to add, which I think is really useful, is a bit of subsurface scattering. So I'll change that to 0.1. Now this does depend a little bit on whether you're using EV or cycles, generally slightly lower values in cycles, in my experience anyway. Currently we're on EV, we might change the cycles later and I'll talk about that in a moment. The subsurface color, you'll want to turn to a nice ready color like this. And subsurface scattering is where the light shines through an object, kind of into the object and bounces around. And it does make the skin a lot more realistic and softer. Let's jump back into layout mode. Now, before we go any further with the lights, I just want to talk a little bit about render settings. So the render tab is just here. And like I say, we're currently in EV. You get extremely fast results in EV. If you've got a good graphics card, then I would suggest jumping across the cycles, but you can see it does take a little bit of time and you can change your device to the GPU. I would suggest using the denoise option as well. And you can see that takes away that noise. And if you've got an Nvidia graphics card, then you can change that to optics and it's super quick when it's like that. I'll just press zero to go back to camera view. If you want to stick with Eevee for the sake of speed, I would suggest certainly turning the ambient occlusion on. That gives you some shadows in the crevices and makes it look more realistic. Subsurface scattering, you can turn the samples up. Again, having a fairly decent computer will help here, but 64 samples will help the subsurface scattering. Screen space reflections will help with the shininess of the skin. And if I scroll down a bit, if we change the shadows, the cube size, again, I would turn that all the way up if your computer can handle it. And high bit depth shadows. You don't need to turn the cascade up unless you're using sun lamps and we're using area lights. The last thing, if I scroll back up to the top is we can change the render to something like 256. You can go a little bit higher if you want and the viewport to something like 128. And these higher values should make a cleaner render. But once again, let's jump from cycles cross back to EV and you can see the difference there. 
So you might want to pause the video there, catch up with me and change your render settings. Now let's have a bit of fun with the lights. So I've got my area light here and I'll just go to the light settings as well so you can see that. If I scale it up, you should be able to see that the shadows become a bit softer and that in itself is quite a nice look. Just the one big area light up there shining down on our subject can look quite effective. Now if I press R to rotate and rotate the light, you can see that it rotates around its object origin. A nice quick way to rotate lights is move your 3D cursor to your subject, in this case the head, change the transform pivot point just up here to 3D cursor and press R to rotate and you can get different effects of your lighting. It tends to look the best from just above, but we could add a little bit of side light to fill in some of these shadows. So I'll just copy this light, Shift D, bring it down to here, bring the target to our object, and I'll bring the intensity down to something like 100. And it's really flattened it out a lot. If we make the light smaller, we can make these shadows a bit harder. But if I press scale now, it will go in towards our cursor. So we need to change the transform pivot point back to medium point, which is the default. You can press period key on your keyboard to get the pie menu for that. Bounding box center and medium point are pretty much the same. And I'll scale that down and you should be able to see as I get smaller, the shadows become a little bit more harsh. It's really flat because it's fairly close to the front. So I'll move it around to the side here, period key, 3D cursor, and rotate that around to the side. And we've got some intense shadows coming from the side. You can also change the color of these lights, maybe make them a touch warmer the warm areas being across this area here, and it's looking quite fun. You can obviously experiment and jump the power up to make it look quite intense if you want. I think I'll go for something like 200 though. So we've got this sort of big fill light here, and we've got what might be called a key light here. And if you want to learn more about those terms, then look up basic three-point lighting. The one light that we're missing is a backlight to kind of pop it out from the background. This is easiest in top view. I'm still on the 3D cursor as my pivot point, so I can press Shift D and R to rotate one of these around to the back like this. And that's level with the head, as you can see just there. Let's turn this up so it's really intense, so we can really see what it's doing. So something like 2000. You can see it's adding a little bit of a rim just around here. Not too much on this side, but a little bit under the chin there. How about changing the color to something a bit more exciting like blue? And we get this nice blue outline like this, which is quite fun. I'll even turn the power up a little bit more, so 3000, and we get a really bright, vivid blue across there. Let's try moving it across a little bit, so rotate it round. Let's see if we can't get a nice rim light on the outside here, and that looks quite fun. I think it's a bit too blue at the moment, so I'll come across to these more turquoisey colors here, and that rim light looks really great. I would like one on this side, though. I don't want them disappearing into the background. So again, Shift D, R to rotate, I move it round and just so I've got a rim light somewhere around there. I'm going to change the intensity though to something like a thousand and we've got this great rim light there. We could even change the color of this one to give it more of a sort of pinky color maybe. Might look quite interesting or more of a purpley blue I think looks quite nice. No actually I think the blue looks the best so probably somewhere around there and I think that's really fun. So currently we've got what is in essence a three-point lighting setup although I have actually got two backlights. So now's a good time to pause the video and catch it with me setting up your lights in this way. Now softer lights tend to look a little bit more sort of romantic and hard lights with hard shadows tend to look a bit more intense. So we could experiment with this light for example, just resizing it to see about the different shadow sizes. Although I am on the 3D cursor at the moment, so I'll just undo those changes and change across to bounding box center and scale it down from there. I quite like the softness of that shadows, but I might just make this a little bit warmer. Could even go right across the reds if you want them looking very evil. Just a little bit warmer like that. And I think that works quite nicely. Might just up the intensity a little bit, a little bit more light in there. And that's working quite nicely. Now at this point, I might start experimenting and duplicating and making a few more lights. I'll just go across the 3D cursor and Shift D, rotate and bring one round to here. Maybe make that a really ready color, just to see if I can change up the look and feel of it. And again, I'll rotate round, see what it looks like from different positions. You could even try some up lighting. So from the bottom here, if you want a lot more intensity and the sort of evil looking character. And just really play around and have some fun. You can hide your lights in the outliner, 
just to see the impact that they'll have. And I quite like just having a slight red light, only 100 watts, just giving it a bit more red from this side. I think that works really nicely. This eye looks a little bit dead, so I might want to experiment with this light here. Maybe I'll duplicate it and create a new one, but really low intensity, something like 20, and just try and get a little bit of a reflection in this eye over here. Might need a little bit more power behind that. Yep, so I'm getting the reflection there, but it is having a bit too much effect on my shape here, but probably somewhere around there looks good. I'll up the intensity of this one, just to test and play, and that looks about right to me. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit warmer, and that looks great. So now's a good time to catch up with me and add in maybe a few more lights, experiment with your lights, change the color, change the size, and play around until you get something you like. So the last thing just before rendering, we can go to our render settings. If you choose to go across the cycles, then you will need to adjust your lights accordingly within cycles because it's a lot brighter. I'll jump back to Eevee and there's two settings you can change now. One is under film, there's an option for transparent that makes the background transparent. And when you save your image, you can take it into Photoshop and add a different background. And lastly, if I come right down to the bottom, there's color management. Filmic is really great for good dynamic range. So lots of detail in the color and you can change it lots in Photoshop or something like that. And you've got the option here of changing it to something like maybe medium contrast and upping the contrast slightly. I quite like that look, but I generally tend to keep it to medium contrast. So in the middle, then again, I can take it into an editing program and edit it there. So the last thing to do is to press F12, see what your render looks like, and that's looking great. And here we are with a few minor tweaks and a big increase in the contrast, and we've got our final result. So hopefully you enjoyed this mini series. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.